Day at 9A starts right now. <laughs> Welcome to Great Day at 9A. I'm Caitlin Francis. And I'm Nicole Nalepa. And it is a cold day. It's always a great day, but it's definitely a winter, classic winter day I here know. in New England, right? And it's an icy start. We've got I a little know. bit of a mess out there. So. Delays, too. A lot of schools were delayed this morning. Yep. So um, let's turn it over to Mike Slifer, mm -hmm. who's in for Scott, who's still in... Florida. Is it sunny down there or should you even tell us? Uh, you know, we'll just pretend <laughs> that in Florida it feels like it's 15 degrees There as well. you go. We'll go with that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Temperatures across the state this morning are in the teens and 20s. It is a cold start to the day. Uh, we were ultimately down into the single digits in just a few towns overnight last night and that's thanks to the fresh snowpack that we added yesterday. Here's a live look at our iCam in New Haven which is still glazed over with ice but given the sunshine we do expect to see improvements on anything that did ice up. A live look at our iCam here in New London too. We're beginning to see improvements on the tarmac uh, where the cars load to get on the ferry and that's something that the entire state is going to experience given how much sun we're expecting today. Mostly sunny skies and with temperatures only in the 20s and a breeze it's going to feel more like the teens even into the afternoon. First Lord Futurecast showing a little bit of an increase in cloud cover later today and then tonight we clear back out with clear skies and a calmer wind. Another cold night on tap. Clouds start to build back in early tomorrow morning and then throughout the afternoon we actually run the risk of perhaps a few flurries but we're focused more on Friday. So to wrap up the rest of the work week for you, cold tomorrow, cold Thursday, some light snow expected on Friday. So don't put the snow gear away just yet. We'll need it later this week. I was just talking to one of our friends, so George has a two-hour delay, so yep. he's at his friend Jude's house. They're having a blast, eating their Cheerios, dancing to music, so a lot of kids are uh, just living the life, as they you said, are, right? I know, living that best <laughs> snow day snow day life. Exactly. And that's what you're supposed to do when you're a kid. Exactly. Don't get too muddy now, kids, when you head to school with those boots. <laughs> I didn't pack your snow pants. Their dad did it. <laughs> well, hopefully they uh, bundle up as they're heading out the door because it's definitely cold out there. But um, as you're heading to school, we're talking about some issues that the capital city is facing. A uh, little bit of a hurdle here uh, this, this upcoming school year. Hartford Public Schools is in the middle of a $77 million deficit. Yeah, we're told it's because COVID relief money that the district has been relying on is now set to expire and of course inflation isn't helping mm -hmm. either. Parents are basically worried about program cuts though after hearing this news. They're worried that, that those cuts could leave their students at a disadvantage but school officials say that there should not be a reason to worry. Yeah they say that in order to fix the problem they'll go back to a budget model used before the COVID funding kicked in plus they're reallocating funds to make sure there are not any program cuts or staffing layoffs. The new budget is set to be approved in April, but there will be plenty of public forums before then, and during which students and families can be part of that discussion. So obviously the concern is very understandable because of a teacher shortage, especially within the Hartford City School District. Um, so they're saying that hopefully they'll be able to at least accommodate that. Yeah, and um, a representative with Harvard Public Schools is saying that they could reduce budgeted positions that are vacant. Mm -hmm. So um, they're trying in every which way to try and save as much money right. as they can, pool things together, um, reallocating resources across mm -hmm. the schools. So hopefully they'll be able to figure out and figure that out. And hopefully the kids will not be feeling any of the effects of that. Right. But again, this is going to be an ongoing issue that uh, we will follow for you. Mm -hmm. So if you are looking for updates, so keep it right here on Channel 3 and the Channel 3 app. Well, believe it or not, there are plenty of different products out there to treat your driveways and sidewalks. Yeah, now's not a bad time to figure out what's best for you. Now, the manager at Cats Hardware in Glastonbury says that magnesium chloride is pet safe and melts at a lower temperature. Didn't know that. Then there's calcium chloride, which is the safest for concrete and will melt at the lowest of temperatures. And although rock salt is the cheapest, it may not be the best option when temperatures drop. Take a listen. On a day like today, it's not really that bad, and we're not going down to like 10 degrees or zero. Right. But if you use rock salt on a day, and then the temperatures go down to like 17, the rock salt's just going to sit, and it's going to be traction. It doesn't really dissolve. Very interesting. So you can find all of these different types of treatments for your specific driveway, whatever you think might be best for you, at your local hardware store. Up next, a new children's program.